Warhammer 40,000 is characterized by a stylistic clash between a golden magnificence and a grim, dark aesthetic. The setting features intricate Baroque designs, towering cathedrals and heavily armored soldiers, set against a backdrop of the dark future where war and decay pervade every aspect of existence, embodied by the dystopian governance which permeates the lives of countless trillions, the Imperium of Man. One of the most striking features of the Imperium is its Gothic architecture. The buildings are massive, imposing, and covered in elaborate designs. The vast majority of structures built in the Imperium are reminiscent of cathedrals. This includes the factories used to create armaments the ships that travel between stars, and even the machines of war used to obliterate their foes. All are adorned with flying buttresses, towering spires, and homages to noble saints and exalted warriors. The scale of these structures is meant to impose a feeling of insignificance, a smallness in the sense of the galactic grand scheme. The architecture is meant to be both awe-inspiring and intimidating to Imperial citizens, reflecting the Imperium's need to impose oppressive, all-encompassing order over its vast population. The Imperial Armada takes this aesthetic, adorned with religious iconography, and combines its designs with those reminiscent of ancient, seafaring vessels. Alongside hundreds of gun decks and heavy ordnance, these ships are covered in towers arches and statues, creating a sense of both reverence and dread. Their unwieldy, almost impractical design, a show of force against the enemies of man, creating a sense of limitless resources which stem from the Imperium's immeasurable reserves. These ships serve as weapons of war so vital that they are considered holy. Their crews can number in the tens of thousands or more, some of whom serve their whole lives aboard, never feeling the ground of a planet beneath their feet. The vessels they inhabit blur the lines between the sacred and the martial, reflecting the principle of war as a holy ideal. But the Navy alone cannot contend with every foe which throws itself against the bulwark that is the Imperium. Even as mankind travels between the stars, ground forces are still a necessity in almost every theater of their unending wars. Soldiers of the Imperium wear armor evocative of a medieval past, drive machines which seem as though they come from our very real present, and wield the terrible weapons of the far future. The biogenetically enhanced Space Marines serve as superhuman warriors of the Imperium. While their power armor is a marvel of technology, they cover themselves in purity seals, skull motifs, and the insignia of their respective chapters. These details not only enhance their fearsome appearance, but also serve as constant reminders of their duty and play a psychic role against the ruinous powers which should not be understood by the minds of men. The Imperial Guard, or Astra Militarum, are the backbone of the Imperium's armies. Their equipment is more utilitarian, yet still bears the marks of Imperial symbolism. While they wear flak armor adorned with skulls or the Imperial Aquila, they also employ camouflage and simple gas masks, signifying an emphasis on the practicality needed for larger scale conflicts. Each of these brave souls worship in the Imperial cult, which deifies the Emperor of Mankind as the literal guiding light of the galaxy. Both on the battlefield and in civilian life, this religious fervor permeates every aspect of Imperial existence. From the grand cathedrals on Holy Terra to the battlefield altars, the Imperium is steeped in religious iconography. Everything from painted symbols 
to actual devotional texts are ubiquitous, serving as constant reminders of the Emperor's divine mandate and the ever-present threat of heresy. This ecclesiarchy has its tendrils wrapped around every one of the millions of Terran worlds, even superseding the only other acceptable religion, the machine cult of Mars. So far, one would be forgiven to think that the Imperium is an endless well of resources, managed by pious, benevolent public servants. However, Despite its relatively advanced technology, the Imperium is a civilization in decline, clinging desperately to the remnants of its former glory as it slips into stagnation. The signs of decay are everywhere, from the crumbling architecture of hive cities to the rusting bulks of ancient titans. This visual deterioration symbolizes the moral and spiritual corruption that plagues the Imperium, a once great civilization now beset on all sides by malicious adversaries and crippled by internal strife. The Imperium's aesthetic is not just about visuals, but also about creating a sense of atmosphere. The pervasive darkness, the omnipresent descent, and the brutalist grandeur all serve to immerse the viewer in a universe where survival of the body and the soul itself are a constant struggle. The juxtaposition of dark futurism with medieval and gothic elements underscores the Imperium's paradoxical nature. It is a society that possesses incredible power, but is crippled by its own dogma and rigidity. Entire planetary systems are lost in endless layers of bureaucracy which serves only to enforce absolute control over the population. The aesthetic of the Imperium of Man is a spiraling tapestry of levacious opulence, religious fervor, and dystopian decay, unwinding into a visual embodiment of the setting's themes of oppression, war, and the essential need for unity, no matter the cost. For all the terror the Imperium of Man inflicts on its own people. Their enemies are far and away more sinister, barbaric, and cruel. May the Emperor protect us all.